It's the start of a new series called Summer Fridays, an interview series with people who cover the Packers, cover the league, cover interesting things for me. Short, sweet, not homework. A Friday show for beautiful weather. You are Locked On Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. You can follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Today on the show... Tyler Brook from Acme Packing Company and the co-author of the book, The Science of Football, is on the show today for a new series that we're going to be doing, I would say most Fridays, not necessarily every Friday, but we're calling it Summer Fridays. If you're in college, your season, your, your season, goodness gracious, your, your academic school year is coming to an end, and we are heading into that part of life. It's going to be beautiful outside. I don't I don't want this to be homework, I, but I but I want to still give you guys some good Friday content. So, Friday shows in the summer, I'm going to keep short and sweet. Preferably in that like 20 minute, 18 to 20 minute range and I'm going to try and make it interviews. Interviews, conversations, just quick bites of conversations that I'm going to have. Let's let's get into it. Let's have a quick conversation and let's all go outside and enjoy the weather. That is my goal for you. I don't I don't want this show to ever feel like homework. So I still want to try and give you something that's interesting and not not like I'm ugh, I'm just trying to fill. Ugh, I'm just trying to find content. No, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. So that's what we're going to do today. Tyler Brook is here from Acme Packing Company. Before we get to that, today's episode brought to you by our friends at Blue Nile. Looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing? Blue Nile has more jewelry than you could ever need. And it's available 24-7 for you. They have people on staff to help you out. Jewelry experts that can help via phone or via chat to help you find that memorable gift for everyone's budget. Celebrate whoever you want. You need to celebrate. Celebrate that special person in your life at BlueNile.com. You can easily navigate thousands of fine jewelry options at every price point. This Mother's Day, give your mother or whomever Something they'll treasure forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Packers listeners get $50 off any purchase of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive good through Mother's Day. That means you're running out of time. Go get thee to BlueNile.com. Use the promo code Locked On. That's code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured. Ships free and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. Today's episode also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball, plus Kentucky Derby this weekend. Let's go. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, let's get to my Summer Friday conversation with Tyler. Joining me now from my old stomping grounds over at Acme Packing Company and the author, the co-author of the science of football, Tyler Brook. Tyler, sorry, I don't want to, I don't want to shortchange Will on this, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, co-author, uh, but I appreciate you joining me. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'm still gonna get used to the co-author title. That feels very strange. A lot of hard work into the one that went into that. Very excited, but uh, I'm doing great, man. I'm fully recovered from the draft. Uh, some very long nights last weekend. Uh, but yeah, some pretty interesting fallout. Uh, pretty excited. Thanks for having me on. Of course, you are you are telling me uh, about about long nights and and fallout. I am certainly still dealing with the fallout. Just check my Twitter timeline if you want proof of that. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Um, so let's let's talk. Let's dig a little bit into what we saw. Mm. 
I was I was watching the draft. We we had our locked on live stream, um, which I appreciate you shouting out in your in your post draft uh, debrief on on everything that you saw and all the coverage that you saw. And when they got to twenty two, I'm going to be honest. Quay Walker was not one of fifty guys. I would have thought they took in that spot. W was that at least on your radar that that could happen? The only person that manifested that that I know of is Justice Mosqueda, my uh, <laughs> corporate overlord. Because in the entire time of following the Packers, when have they ever had two, not one, but two or two or one good the, inside the linebacker? Never. <laughs> so the fact that they valued the position that much and they thought that highly of Quay Walker was pretty surprising. Uh, so now going back and looking at the player, uh, I think I can see why they did it. Um, you know, after getting your uh, butt kicked a few times by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with uh, their two inside linebackers, uh, maybe they're a little interested in having two of their own. Here's the thing. Um, after going back and, and re-watching some of the stuff and watching some new stuff, it makes less sense to me. I'm going to be honest. Really? Okay. I, I don't, I don't see a first round player. I just, I don't, I see flashes. I see some upside of like, oh, okay, if this hits, it's, a, you could get a nice, you could get a nice player. I don't know, man. I just, I, I, I don't, I don't get it, but look, I have said this from the beginning. I understand that there are going to be differences in evaluations. So the Packers think the yeah. player is X. I think the player is Y. I don't pretend to know better necessarily. I can only tell you what I see. I just, I, I don't get it. Um, make, just make the case for me that let's say he's a, he's a good player. He's an 80th percentile kind of player. What kind of value, what kind of role do you think he plays in this Packers defense? Man, I was about to make the case against myself to start, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, as far as like what he can bring, I think you can, you know, you can scheme up a lot of different things with him and Devondre Campbell. You know, uh, I'm very curious to see how nickel packages are going to work specifically now. Uh, they were doing something they like to call penny, uh, or, you know, you're taking out a linebacker instead of a D lineman, things like that. So you're going to have these two linebacker nickel looks, which are going to be very interesting because Quay, he can play in coverage. He can break downhill. He does a good job of reading the quarterback's eyes in zone coverage. Uh, and he's just a big dude, right? Uh, outside of coverage, I'm very curious to see how they scheme up some blitzes. Um, we did see a little bit of Devondre Campbell on the edge. Um, one of the very interesting things that I saw on the Georgia film rewatching it was they had a play with Nicobe Dean over the center, uh, and they had five guys standing up, and then they have Quay Walker blitzing from depth. So things like that can really get, uh, you know, even like an inexperienced offensive line kind of messed up in their protections. You can get a free rusher that way. So I think there's at least some versatility with what you can do with them. Uh, my counterpoint to it was I had talked about like a week before the draft uh, not getting someone like Devondre Campbell, but getting an inside linebacker in day one or day two, uh, like Nicobe Dean, who is someone mm -hmm. that can like shoot through gaps, really explosive. Even if he's undersized, you have Devondre Campbell covering on that front. Uh, so he can come off and just kind of just, you know, really go after the ball, find the rushing lanes and explode. So I was surprised about the Walker pick. I did start campaigning a little bit for Nicobe Dean at 28. Uh, sounds like the medicals. I totally understand that pick. Um, but yeah. I, I am with you. I was pretty stunned when it happened. See, I would have understood more someone like um, Devin Lloyd. I think that would have that would have made some more sense to me, just because you watch him play on the edge, and you're like, "Wait, oh my god!" Like this guy yeah. could could just play on the edge if they really wanted him to, and then that would allow you to do some different kinds of things. So if you're going to go with a linebacker, I think that would have been that would have made more sense to me, just in terms of like what the plan is. So I'm really interested to see what they do. Um, it's going to give them a lot of flexibility. And I think you're right. It's going to be, we're going to see a lot of four man fronts with two true interior defensive linemen, two guys on the edge and two linebackers. And they're going to play like a four, two, five. They're going to play like a lot of college teams do um, with, with some of those small looks. Devonte Wyatt. I, I think that one makes more sense, right? Because he was someone who had been a first round player, all, all process. Um, and the Packers take bigs. They take big dudes in the first round. We know they love to do that. And you can see him playing three, Kenny Clark playing at the nose. You can see them flip-flopping. What did you see from Devontae Wyatt on tape? 
How many times do you see a defensive lineman used as a spy and yeah, able to catch very up with few. <laughs> He's a very explosive athlete, right? You know, that Georgia defense. Uh, I keep saying, you know, even if you don't love the value, you got more than 20% of a national championship defense. Right. Maybe one of the greatest defenses in college football history. Um, I, I agree with you. I think there's a lot of versatility you can do up front on the defensive line now. You can move him and Kenny Lark Clark around based on matchups, uh, really try and get after the guys you think are weak links on the opposing offensive line. Uh, it was hard to swallow at the time because you had heard some red flag off the field concerns. Uh, some of those are coming out. I know Bob McGinn mentioned some of them uh, recently this week. Um, so it's kind of hard of, you know, you got to figure out and focus just like on the field when you're doing your evaluations. But you know, as someone that covers the team, and I'm sure fans are very well aware of, you know, you're going to have to be concerned with some of the off-the-field stuff as well. Yeah, you just hope that that he keeps his head on straight and and yeah. that and that the issues that we heard about, the Packers, Brian Gutekinds explained in detail. They went into detail about them. They yep. were, were pretty thorough, it sounds like, in vetting the player and these circumstances. Um, and their position was, look, he didn't strike anyone uh, he didn't hurt anyone. This was an altercation um, where he kicked down a door and, you know, whatever. Like, your your mileage may vary on that as an explanation, right? Yeah. But I think the Packers, at least being able to explain and defend it, makes you feel a little bit better of like, okay, they cared enough to look into it because plenty of teams would have just been like, nah, he's a really good football player. We don't care. So yeah. from that standpoint, I, I think you can appreciate although it is just like the bare freaking minimum that they can do that. They did it because not every team would have done it. I, don't I also go, go ahead. Oh, go. I also want to think that there's a support system there, right? You know, he's, he's getting, getting a hope. college. Uh, there's a college teammate coming in with Quay Walker. And then he did say on record after getting drafted that one of his favorite players growing up was Kenny Clark, which is kind of weird because Kenny Clark's like two years older than him. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it is a guy that he's going to look up. to. Not even, I think. Be, yeah. Something like that. Hopefully it's another guy you can look up to and, you know, be a mentor for him. So, you know, and it also, it, it is green Bay. Uh, although hold on, I don't want to make anyone mad. We'll say it's a vacation destination. So there is stuff to do there. There is, there is stuff to do there for sure. Um, and, and don't forget his other collegiate teammate, um, Eric Stokes also yep. on awesome. this Packers team. So, um, you know, I think that is, that is useful as well. We'll see. Um, I, I like. I, I don't want to go through pick by pick necessarily because yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have plenty of time over the course of the off season. We're gonna we've devoted whole shows. We already did a whole show on Christian Watson. Just big picture. How what what was your impression? Just like when I say, okay, what did you think of the draft? Did you see a through line? What's your answer? I I didn't have the best vibes of the draft of the first couple of days. Uh, I do think they had the best day three of any NFL team. I agree. You know, there's there's probably some bias in there. I can be aware of that. But the value that they got with Romeo Dobbs, Zach Tom, and Kingsley Inagbari, and Rashid Walker, who even if I'm not as high on, is insane value in the seventh round just up tools yep. alone. Um, that saved the draft for me. And it's not even like the first two days were bad. It's just I don't think I would have necessarily agreed with those picks or even the value with trading two second rounds for Christian Watson. But again, day three saved it. I really think Zach Tom has a future in the NFL. Uh, I have not seen many left tackles move like that, and I get he's undersized, but you're also not going to find many college prospects that played center and left tackle for their college team. So at the bare minimum, that guy's going to be a backup center on the team. I think he finds his way into the starting lineup, potentially at a guard position. Um, yeah, day three was just, it was basically anytime there was a pick on the board, I'd be like, it'd be great if they got that guy, and then they took the guy. So I don't think you can be happier than that. Yeah, the, the interesting thing, I went back and watched Zach Tom, and I was just sort of like, why can't he play tackle? Yeah. Can you, can you tell me? Like, I know he has, quote-unquote, short arms. His length is almost, he, like, his his body is Rashawn Slater. And his Rashawn Slater looked movement. pretty good at tackle last year. And you're right, his movement is, is very yeah. similar to Rashawn Slater. So... I don't, you know, not that I think that one was a top 15 pick and one was a fourth round pick. Like we're, we're comparing apples and oranges a little bit, but if that guy didn't play at Wake Forest, there's just no way he winds up in the fourth round. And I think that's a little bit the case of some, a couple of the guys that the Packers picked. I think it's the same of Romeo Dubs, who had he been at a school that was not Nevada, I think would have gone higher. And I think it's true of Christian Watson. Cause if he, if he yeah. would have gone, let's just say a low class power five. Like he plays at Purdue instead of David Bell. Like that, I think all of a sudden we have a different perception of who those guys are, even if that's not fair. 
Yeah, mine would have been a little more negative because I am an Indiana grad. So if he goes to <laughs> Purdue, I'm, I'm maybe not as happy about it. Um, I, I agree with you. Good thing I didn't of, pick Indiana then and slander Indiana with that. Yeah, yeah. Two wins last year. Two wins. Uh, what a year. <laughs> I'm excited for the future. Um, I, I agree with you. It's a lot of small school guys. Tremendous value. And um, she did come from a big program. But man, that guy is another impressive one that you're thinking about a third round pick. Uh, he can absolutely play probably any position. Maybe not yeah. center. I don't think he has any experience there, but um, he's got the play strength. And I think that's the one thing we're talking about why Zach Tom wasn't getting, you know, as much credit and uh, getting picked in the fourth round. Play strength's not his strength. You know, he's not going to be a guy that drives a lot of people in the run game. His hands are great, though. I think he always keeps them in good position. And he can wall off defenders. I just don't think he's necessarily going to create push. And that's where I think it maybe makes his future position in the NFL a little more difficult. But again, if we're just talking about all these guys as a whole, you got so much dang good value in day three that, it, you know, the draft set, you, uh, it's funny that they didn't have a ton of glaring needs after last season, even with losing Devonte Adams and you just added a ton of depth across the board. It's one- all right. More as part of our summer Friday series with Tyler Brooke coming up in just a second. Before we get there, we have to talk about our friends at built bar. Summer is coming. Summer is here. It was 70 degrees where I am here today. And with summer, you're going to need food on the go. Built Bars are the perfect snap to take with you family vacations. Throw them in your bag, your kids' backpacks. Make sure that everyone has a bar and that you are fueled for summer adventures. They're healthy. They're delicious. What more can you ask for from a, f- a food, especially when you're trying to get that summer body? And if you don't believe me, high in protein, high in fiber, low in net carbs, low in calories, but tastes delicious because every Built Bar is covered in 100% chocolate. And they keep coming up with flavors that seem to outdo the last flavor. It is unbelievable what they are able to do. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKS15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKS15 for 15% off at Built.com. And thanks for making Locked on Packers your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen, Locked on NFL. The schedule may be dark, but the NFL never stops and neither does Locked on NFL. Get insights and opinions from hosts including Ross Jackson, Chris Carter, Tony Wiggins, Plus, locked on NFL hosts repping all 32 squads. There's no offseason for real fans, so make sure you're subscribed to Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. All right, back to Tyler. It's one of those things where, like, I didn't like how they handled the first three picks. Yeah. I didn't like the positional value that they got in the first round. I didn't like having to trade up when you could have just taken one of those guys and you took two positions in the first round that are not premium positions. All of that being said, especially after day one, I loved every single pick. Like yeah. every, like that is so rare. It's rare for me to like three picks or <laughs> yeah. but just because, you know, you're just, this is such a subjective business. Like you're the, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But to your point, it's like, I, oh, I hope that they should take this guy here. Oh, they took that guy. Like they trade when, as soon as they, they, I saw they were trading up. I was like, oh, they're taking Christian Watson. I bet like, that's the guy that they should take Christian Watson. Like, hey, I would love for them to take Sean Ryan in the third round. Hey, that's who they took. I thought Sean Ryan was a top 50 player. I thought yeah. Zach Tom was a top 50 player. I thought Romeo Dubs was a top 75 player. And and like Ross Uglum, who was on the show earlier this week, very similar situation where like they, I think they took six guys from his top 100. That should yeah. be impossible. You should not yeah. be able to do that. Now they had four picks in the top 75, but still to get the kind of value to me says a lot about what they were able to, to do in terms of finding value. Let me ask you sort of a philosophical question here. There, there was a lot of discussion about draft grades. And there is a, a, a vociferous crowd on Twitter who's like, draft grades are stupid. They're of no use. And we should ignore them at all costs. I like I like half agree with that. I think there, there are some things. I, I like the way that Dane Brugler does it, where he doesn't grade them based on his evals. He just goes, these are my favorite classes. I like, I like yeah. these the most. Because I, I do think the grade thing is kind of stupid. But then I also thought um, your your colleague, um, Paul Noonan over at AP, yeah. APC, wrote a really good piece about like, the only thing we can judge is the process. Um, but of course, when you do that, then you have people going, well, let's just wait and see them play. And it's like, I, I'm very, I, I struggle with all of this, trying to find that balance. What What do you find yourself now, as we look back on it, evaluating the most? It's really tough. I think you got to look at drafts as a whole. Um, I prefer my personal draft grades, which are just, you know, things that are not related to actual draft picks. Like, you know, gave you an A plus on the locked on podcast show. Right. So mm. we'll do those draft grades instead, at least I like personally. That. <laughs> 
A, um, a plus think, on Quay Walker picking number seven, a plus on Christian yeah. Watson changing from 82 to nine. Like those are yeah. the things let's grade. Yeah. Jersey numbers are probably the biggest part of draft grades. In my opinion, you know, Has Romeo dubs 80, 87. Those are some big shoes to fill, man, but I love it. You know, I like, you got that number. It's a good looking number that I think that's really, you know, something we're not talking about enough, but you know, if you're actually doing actual draft grades, I feel like in our industry, you're kind of like forced to, right. Cause you know, people are going to click them regardless. Yeah, um, they sure are. I think oh my God. you got, you got to, you got to make sure you do your homework all year long. If you're going to do the grades, in my opinion though, because you need to be able to talk about these day three, you guys that get, and you know, you're not gonna be able to talk about all of them. Uh, there are a couple guys that were taken, you know, cause I also follow the Colts. I'm from Indianapolis. I still live here. Um, where I'm like, I don't know who the heck that guy is. So, you know, you're not going to get all of them. You can watch, you can watch as many guys, you're going to miss them. Um, but I think just taking a look at the draft as a whole, uh, I do agree with Paul. I think process is important. Try not to be too harsh unless it's the Chicago bears and you don't do anything to help Justin Fields. Oh then God. I don't think be a little bit harsh. The only guy that, that I haven't watched is, is Ford from Miami. Cause I'm just like, I'm yeah, not same. watching a seventh round interior defensive lineman who is probably not going to make this team. I'm just like, like maybe I, I will get to it in July when it, there's nothing else to do. But right now there's just too much other fun stuff to be doing. No, no, no offense yeah. to him. I just like, I'd already watched almost all that. This is kind of the point that like, I thought Zach Tom was going to go in the top hundred. I thought, yeah. I thought we thought that, that Rashid Walker was going to go in the first like 120 at least. Yeah. And he was, I think he was 114 on the athletic um, composite board. Like if you just look at that, those kinds of things too, the Packers did really well. I want to give you some some runway here to talk about the science of football. Um, what 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 are people getting when they order? And they or, they should order the book. What are people getting with this book? What what is it? Yeah, I really appreciate the plug. Thank you for that. Um, so this is my first book. I'm very excited to be writing it. Um, basically, we wanted to look at you know like every phase and aspect of the game, whether that's offense, defense, special teams broadcasting, gambling, analytics, things like this, and just kind of figure out what, obviously with Will, you're doing injuries as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what goes into these things and how is the game moving forward? So, you know, I'll give you a couple of examples. You know, we're covering the Packers. We talk a lot about offensive line versatility, right? We just talked about Zach Tom, Sean Ryan, all these guys. Uh, I got to talk with Cleveland Browns, former offensive tackle, Joe Thomas. Uh, talk about why the offensive line is changing. We're getting more athletic there. It's no longer big guys that are just trying to like, you know, maul people. Um, talked about the change in potential kickoff rules because I talked to Sam Schwartzstein of the XFL or formerly of the XFL. Uh, their kickoff rules produce zero injuries. I know Packers fans saw that really violent collision with Kylan Hill against the Arizona Cardinals. Um, their rules were fascinating to me. Uh, we have a whole thing about fourth down uh, and going for it on fourth down. Uh, I talked to... Uh, Kevin Kelly, he used to coach at Pulaski Academy High School in Arkansas, where they basically never punted, uh, and they ended up winning multiple state championships. Uh, so you're going to read a lot about um, you know, concepts that you've heard of and are starting to become like hot debates on first take, but like, what is the actual science and why are people doing these? Hot debates on first take. The, you, you, you do not you do not usually get science on first take, I will say, which is yeah. one reason to get the book. By the way, the will that we have referenced now multiple times without actually naming his full name. <laughs> will, will Carroll is who we're talking about. Yeah. Um, he is uh, at Injury Expert on Twitter. I'm sure you follow him or have seen his work out there. Um, what was what was something that as you were doing the research or as you were doing your interviews, someone said something you just went, wait a second. That is, I, I have never thought about that like that before. So I did a whole chapter on analytics and, you know, I've always been interested in them, but that is not my forte. I'm also not a scientist, believe it or not. So you mm. might be surprised about that. Um, but I was talking to Cynthia Freeland with NFL Network and the way she described analytics, something just clicked for me. And like analytics isn't just this like vague thing that's just in science and numbers. All of it is based on historical contextual data. And when I heard that, I was just like, I, I don't understand why that doesn't click for more people and coaches are so resistant to it. It's not about, you know, science and guessing games. It's about what has happened in the past and what is the, what are the likely outcomes because of that? I, I can't wait to read it. Um, and I, I'm, I'm excited for you. Um, I know Thanks, that, 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 I appreciate you, that you work hard for this. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on. Thanks for coming on Locked on Packers. We will do it again. Um, let my listeners know if you're watching on YouTube, you can see his Twitter handle down there uh, at Tyler D. Brooke with an E. Um, where, where are people going to be able to find the work that you do? 
Yeah, mostly just Twitter at Tyler D. Brook. Uh, you can also find me on Acme Packing Company. Uh, and then, yeah, just make sure to pre-order The Science of Football. I'm pretty sure if you just Google that in my name, you're going to find it on wherever you buy uh, books, which is a lot of places. All the places. Thanks, Tyler. All the places. I, I appreciate it. Of course. All right, that's it. That's it. We're done. No more. And I won't have to explain it next Friday. So that'll that'll shave another two, three minutes off. So this will be the perfect bite-sized thing for you on Fridays. I hope you look forward to it. Um, we're going to have some fun with it, bring in some fun people, some interesting people. And maybe maybe not even all Packer stuff. Maybe sometimes we'll just be hanging out and just having some fun. That is what we want to do here, especially in the off-season. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to hit us up on the Locked on Packers fan hotline, you can do that, 920-341-3775 to stay Locked on Packers.